Hi everybody, today I'm with Persia joining me on my YouTube channel to talk all things self-love and from very, very different angles. We've gone through some very crossover experiences with hating our bodies and using food and all sorts to kind of suppress the way we feel and I thought I'd get Persia on because she has the most interesting story ever. Um, to chat to you a bit. So Persia founded Addictive Daughter and has this incredible book which I've got here because it's amazing and hilarious called The Inner Fix which is just basically like your guide to getting out of a quarter life crisis. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Persia now runs incredible Facebook lives stuff, all about self, um, self lo well, loving yourself and loving your, your partner um, all about relationships and it's so interesting so I thought I would get Persia on today to talk about self love. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. No problems. And so I thought just to start, Persia, how did you get into, I mean, obviously writing a book mm -hmm. um, all about your quarter life crisis and all the problems that can happen in this day and age, because we're such a fast paced generation, I think, like, mm -hmm. it's just everything happens, we, we're kind of constantly going, we never really look after ourselves. Yeah. Um, how did you get to write, write it in the first place? Well, I have quite, I'm, I have a long story, and I'm going to yes. try and do it nice and succinctly for you. Yes. So, read the book um, if you want the long story. Read the book if you yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, as we were talking about before filming, um, I think the idea of self-love is, is, it's so easy to just, you know, it's an acute Instagram post or a yeah. hashtag, but actually what, what's it really about is your relationship with yourself. Yes. And uh, from the outside, much like yourself, like when I was younger, my life looked Great, you know, mm. sister, older brother, nice little house, mum and dad, good, you know, good school, good grades, boyfriends, whatever. But the reality behind closed doors was that my parents were high functioning drug addicts. So I had a very turbulent life for the first 16 years. Yeah. Um, and very quickly I started, probably from the age of about eight or nine, I started hooking up with all kind of like hooking up with boys at eight years old. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. <laughs> Not quite that young, but okay, I discovered boys and I was like, this is great, I can get validation and attention and also escapism, I wasn't, ha like, yeah. my life was not happy, yeah. so I could just, like, not think about it and kind of, I guess, abandon mm. myself and distract myself with boys. Yeah. Um, my parents then got sober when I was 16, mm. uh, which sounds amazing and it kind of was, but I wasn't used to it because I was chaos and turbulence and unpredictability was yeah. what I was familiar with. Of course. So uh, what I did was then I started acting out very self-destructively mm. in my relationships. I cheated on every boy. Um, I never was single. Um, I did not want to be on my own. I just needed that kind of constant fix. Mm. Um, and then it got progressively worse and worse to the point where uh, after drama school, which was another one, you know, I was kind of all about, look at me, look at me trying to get attention so I became an actress yes. uh, for the wrong reasons quite frankly because I wanted to be famous and be loved and have attention yeah. that's it um, I did love acting as well but really I, yeah, I was doing it for the wrong reasons and after drama school I, I didn't know what to do not having that kind of and you know how strict it is and having that routine absolutely it kind of you know even though it, it was very uh, dysfunctional and unhealthy in many ways it kept me reasonably contained and once suddenly that was taken away um, and I did, you know, I had the odd acting job here and there, but I just didn't have that structure. So I ended up working yeah. in a strip club, um, which was, uh, as a hostess, not a stripper, but I had a really awful situation where I got, I was sexually abused in mm. there. Um, which then led me to, uh, that same summer, I did an acting job in China, and I put on two stone in two months. Yeah. And that was the one thing that I couldn't hide from my family. I could hide the boys and the cheating and any drugs I was taking, could not hide the rapid weight gain. Yeah. And so my dad, when he picked me up from the airport, kind of was like, whoa, <laughs> what's yeah. going on here? So he said, how about we go on a nice uh, yoga retreat in Thailand um, uh, for New Year? And I went along and one morning he said to me, look, darling, I'm really worried about you. I can see that you're not happy and that you're being very self-destructive. And if there's one piece of advice I have for you, it's this. Focus on the insides and the outsides will take care of themselves. So that for me was the very beginning. That, that piece of advice led to me starting meditation because I knew that I needed to work out and start healing what was yeah. going on inside of me. Um, it also led to me getting therapy, which I massively needed to, to get because even though you know my parents were fine now, I hadn't dealt with any of the stuff no. that happened before. Um, you know, I started getting very much in practice of gratitude, writing daily gratitude lists. Um, I started treating people better, which was a huge thing, huge thing for me, daily journaling to get out whatever was going on in my head and kind of my heart and get that out of my head and onto the page, which was incredibly helpful. 
And um, then as I started this work, one of my best friends from drama school who was going through similar, we'd have very different backgrounds, but she was going through mm -hmm. similar stuff in her love life. And um, we decided to start blogging about, you know, our kind of our changed behavior. Um, and we started a blog called Addictive Daughter. And very straight away, we had this dream of writing a book um, that would speak to people uh, who were where we were, who were struggling with, you know, relationships, friendships, career, mm -hmm. finances, all of those different yeah. issues. What we were having, essentially what we deemed a quarter-life crisis. Yeah. Um, so, very fortunately, we attracted quite a lot of press, and then we uh, got a book deal. And then this came out last year. Full of hilarious Lots of anecdotes, so the long okay. version, mm -hmm. um, plus a load of guidance and tips is in that book. So, I, you can also get a few free chapters um, on the innerfix.com if you if you're interested in yeah. finding out more. And then after we after the book came out, Joey, my um, friend and business partner, decided that we kind of wanted to also pursue our own projects on the side as well. So now I've just launched my, launched my own personal uh, website, persianlawson.com, which is focused on helping people attract and keep their soulmates. And of course, bring that back to the topic we're talking about, self-love. Mm. The main message is that you can't expect to have a healthy, happy relationship if you don't have a healthy, happy relationship with yourself first and foremost. I think I want to take you back first of all, just to what you were saying, you know, you went to um, that yoga retreat with your dad, mm -hmm. and he told you that, that brilliant, you know, you've got, yeah, you've got to look after the insides, do you say the outsides? Yeah, focus first? on the insides, and the outsides will take care yeah, of themselves. Yeah, I think that's, that's like a really beautiful way to start, because the hardest thing for anybody, mm -hmm. if they know that they don't completely love themselves, yeah. is to start. Yeah. How did you actually decide to go, okay, I'm going to bloody change? Because you mm -hmm. created so many habits for yourself. Yeah. Like we all do, you know, for me it was not, it was kind of acting out by making my body look a certain way. Yeah. Um, and make, basically just not eating. And I knew that I needed to turn it around. Yeah. I knew, but I it took me a hell of a long time to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did you? Well, I think that's the first step. Is yeah. I, if I'm honest, I remember I was in Thailand and I read this book called Women Who Love Too Much. And um, the reason I, that book was on the trip with me is I was sat in just before I went to Thailand. I was sat well, yeah, lay, lying hungover in bed, in my friend's bed, mm. um, after a big night out. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> and um, I something in me just I, I my eye looked over at the bookshelf. And I just, something, I can't even describe what it was, but it was like a force that picked me up and walked me over to this bookshelf. And, it, and I saw this book straight away. The, the spine said, women who love too much. And I remember thinking, that sounds naff. And then, anyway, I picked it out, opened it at a random page, and my eyes straight away went to one sentence that said uh, something like, daughters of drug addicts tend to inherit a predisposition to having very unhealthy and dysfunctional relationships with men. And I was like, oh, hello, that's me. <laughs> and then everything it was saying, everything it was saying was so relevant to me. So I said to my friend, oh, can I take this away? And she said, oh yeah, I was gonna give that to you anyway. It's like, not really for me. So I had, I happened to have this book and in Thailand, it was the first time, you know, I wasn't drinking, wasn't out partying. I had nothing to do mm. but focus on myself. Um, so I guess, you know, that's my first, first um, piece of advice is give yourself some space and time. If you know what I need, and because that's the thing, we, we have such busy lives right now. Yeah. And maybe it's, you know, you're going on holiday soon, or maybe not. Maybe you just think, I need a little bit of space. I need to go up to stay with my parents for a weekend. Even, like, I'm going to give myself an hour to sit down and read this book that I've heard about, or read the introduction, or read a blog post, something. Or, you know, just look for some, ask for some support and guidance. And I really believe it that I, when I was reading this book, I knew okay, I've got serious yeah. stuff to sort out here. But the next moment, the way that I work, being perfectionist and an overachiever, which I know that you are as well, is I went, well, right, okay, I know that I need to be healed and fixed, so Project Persia, Project Sort My Life Out, I'm gonna be fixed in a month. And of course, that's not how it goes. No. It, it, like, you, I had 25 years of being very unhealthy and dysfunctional. It was not gonna be cured overnight. No, so that's my next piece of advice, is know that this is a journey that you're on and you're right at the start. So giving yourself space, but also knowing it is progress, not perfection. It's a day progress. at a time, one day at a time. And I think once you make that decision, it's crazy what synchronicity and guidance will start showing up for you. The minute you say, okay, I need help, and you don't even, you don't, you know, you might be like, you know, to the universe or something spiritual like that, or you might just be like, I don't believe in anything, but I just know I need some help, and I'm just going to put that out there. And once you make that, like, kind of commitment almost to mm. yourself, yeah, 
the most bizarre coincidences will start happening. Someone will call you and say just the thing you needed to hear, or a friend will get in touch, or you'll hear the lyrics of a song on a radio that speak directly to your situation, or you'll be recommended a book. Or, it, or in the way that I was, a book will pretty much fall off Or you'll be listening shelf. to this video. You're listening, yeah, and here, this is your sign, this is your sign. And you go, absolutely, I'm yeah. gonna actually action it. And just think about the thing that you wanna change. So for me, yeah. the thing that really started, like I had such low self-esteem, I, mm -hmm. I really hated my body. Yeah. But at the same time, I knew it was the reason that I was getting the parts. And I yeah. knew absolutely that everybody, like I still have friends now that go, oh my God, your body back, like when you were 13, 14, like everybody was jealous of it. And I had this thing of being like, oh, you know, like, that's great. Yeah. But actually, I hated myself. I yeah. would look at myself in the mirror and be like, I just look horrible. And I remember going, okay, well, that's fine. I'm going to just pop back on some weight. I'm going to feel fine. Like, every problem I ever had yeah. to do towards food will completely go. But it doesn't. Like, because you're trying like, to go from the outside in and it doesn't work. Absolutely. And it's that thing of just literally just accepting where you're at. Yes. And just being like, okay. Exactly. Know. And as we were talking about before filming, it's the only thing you ever have to do mm. is ask yourself, what is the next right thing? Which means, what is the next most loving choice I can make? Sometimes it might be, make myself a nice cup of tea. It might be, call a friend. It might be, go for a long walk because I've been sat inside all day. And, you know, it's it's simple, small things that add up day to day. Absolutely. And also, you know, you we all are, look, we're human, we're fallible. I still mess up all the time. I still do unloving things for my, to myself, for myself, to other people, mm. because I'm human. And yes, they're not as dramatic as they used to be, but they are still there. So the, the most important thing, I think, is self-compassion and acceptance and forgiveness, because yeah. you are only able to extend forgiveness and love to someone else in the in direct correlation with that which you can extend to yourself first and foremost because yeah. it all starts with you and yeah so I think that's so important giving yourself space giving yourself time being mm -hmm. gentle with yourself going easy doing one day at a time asking for help asking for support and then being open to it yeah showing yeah. up for it when it comes so for example if you are watching this video right now and it has resonated in some way what was the thing that stuck out? When I talked about the book, did you go, oh yeah, that sounds like me, I think I'd relate, but I'm not gonna do anything about that. Or are you gonna think, okay, mm. I don't even have to buy it, but I can go on the innerfix.com and download free chapters. And maybe that's all that will happen. So you've got to remember that we are all human. Like even now, I have a huge day recipe testing and I eat so much food and I feel incredibly guilty. And, mm. I'm, I, and I start to feel that kind of like self-hatred. Yeah. Where I'm like, what have I done? And I just feel my body I'm like, oh, this doesn't feel good. Yeah. And then I remember what are the things that I can do for myself to make myself feel better. Can think about all the things that I love about my body, that's one mm -hmm. thing. And then I can wake up the next day and I can go do an exercise class, I can mm -hmm. go teach, I can surround myself with those mm -hmm. people that are supportive. And yeah. I always have that one person, I think that's like the most important thing. You had mm -hmm. Joey, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you opened up to other people, mm -hmm. but it's like, if you have that thing, even if it's just, I struggle to lose yeah. weight, and I just, yeah. it never happens, or yeah. um, I, actually feel like I'm doing whatever it is it's just mm -hmm. being able to open up and actually talk to somebody it yeah. then takes it away from just being internal and then yeah. you're so much more self-destructive yeah I think you touched on three really important things there one the first being yes connecting with someone else maybe that will be a therapist only you know you might just as Sassy was saying have a friend that mm -hmm. you is really loving and unjudgmental and supportive and you decide right I'm gonna call them every day and I'm gonna you know, in fact, I've just um, discovered this, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this one, is it anyway? This amazing new app called Marco Polo, which is basically WhatsApp, but it's video recording. Oh! It's amazing. Me and my friend, who are very, very close, uh, she's an actress and she's always filming and she's really busy and I'm kind of all over the place as well. So it's not that easy to yeah. speak, but we can leave each other little voice, ma voice things where we see each other and it's... You know, that's a, you, that's a really good use of technology. That is. Where you can connect, and we just, you know, once a day at least, if not more, how I'm feeling, you know, what's going on for me, what I'm, what I'm doing today, what, and it reminds me to, okay, have I eaten properly? Yeah. Have I done a bit of exercise? Have I drunk enough water? Always forget to do that one. So simple, always forget to drink water. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's a really great way, is like, yeah, speaking to someone, connecting, yeah. don't sit and suffer in silence, because that's where the shame and the guilt will really, like, yeah maximize if you do that 
I think the most important thing that I want you to take from this video is to remember that life is not a rehearsal. It doesn't matter what other people have, how many followers they have, if they've got a boyfriend that you think is better than yours, or it doesn't matter yeah. what it looks like, it matters how you feel on the inside, that's the only thing that matters. I really hope this video has helped, thank you Persia, I'm leaving all um, Persia's links in the description box below for you guys to have a look at, they are brilliant. Thank you Persia, thank you guys for watching and I will see you here next week.